Good afternoon, guys. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. Beautiful afternoon here in central Ontario, Canada. What I'm doing this time of year, just as winter is approaching, is I'm getting out here in the woodyard and I'm splitting some wood. It's a beautiful time of year to do it, especially because the bugs are gone, the temperatures are comfortable, and I don't have to fight off any snow yet. Yet is the key word. I think snow is like days away. Anyways, what I'm doing today is I've gotten out of retirement. This thing right here, this, if you've been around the channel, you've seen before. This is my old wood splitter that I've been using for years. Although I don't even know how old it is or what brand it is. It's worked relatively good. It, uh, you know, when it starts, it splits the wood. I can sit there and pretty much read a paper, drink the coffee as it cycles because it's so slow. But let's face it, it gets the job done. And I got it out of retirement for sort of nostalgia today. So assuming it starts, because that engine right there isn't exactly reliable. Assuming it starts, we're going to split that pile of wood with it. And this pile of wood you can see behind me, there's 11 pieces of hardwood there. A mixture of some beech, some hard maple, there might be something else in there. But we're going to split that with that unit. And then a similar size pile with the same species, we're going to split with this thing. This is my relatively new to me, Eastern Made Ultra. This is a giant leap forward in terms of, uh, in terms of overall speed, efficiency, general robustness. This is a commercial grade unit. This uh, Eastern Made Ultra here has a four second cycle time, 14 horsepower engine, yeah, it's got everything. It even has a four way wedge that I have, but I just don't have it on today, just to make the comparison somewhat equal. So we're gonna run that pile of wood on that, run this pile of wood on this, and we're gonna see exactly how much better this Eastern Made Ultra is than that thing right there. Cause let's face it, many of you guys out there are thinking to yourself, gee, it'd be nice to, have a unit like this, but is it worth the jump? It's a jump in price. It's uh, you know, a more robust machine. You can make a living with this if you wanted to. That, yeah, it's got some lesser quality parts on it, but as I said before, it still gets the job done if it'll start. So let's fire this thing up first and foremost. That's probably gonna dictate how the rest of the video goes. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm not very optimistic here. This thing has been sitting out for about a month and a half and uh, it doesn't get neglected, it gets maintained. But it wasn't starting at the best of times, even when it was in full operation. Let's hope it works today. Let me just remember how it controls work here. All the controls have worn off, so I can't even see the uh, labels. Fuel on, I think that's choke. Okay. sound good it's like an exercise video <laughs> Okay, well, let's give it the good stuff. Whoa. Oh. That's what it does every time. It just gives you a glimmer of hope and then it just quits. Oh, it had it. I swear it had it. Oh, it's going to go. Come on, you. Come on. Oh, yeah. See that? That's the uh, glimmer of hope <laughs> blowing out the exhaust. I think it's going to go.
Come on, you. First and foremost, that's not exactly fun when uh, it doesn't run for you, but once it gets up and runs, it's a pretty good splitter. It was splitting everything I had there. You guys saw some pretty wavy pieces. Uh, went through it without problems. So this old thing, yeah, it's going to live another day. I just don't know if it's going to be my first choice every time. You guys can see how much wood we made there. We're going to head over to the other pile on the Easton Made Ultra, see how long that took. This wasn't as bad as I remembered. Although it's probably because I enjoyed the rest after pulling on that pull handle probably like 20 times. Anyways, here we go. Alright, let's see what a cold start on this thing looks like. 
make sure I get it how we're supposed to have it. Choke, we'll get fuel on there. Well guys, there we go. There's the results. You probably aren't surprised. The Estimate Ultra is a four second cycle time machine. That right there, I couldn't tell you what it is, but it's obviously slower. Many people will say, well, faster isn't always better. And I completely agree with you. You don't always have to have the fastest machine. 
However, if you have the fastest machine and you have a bunch of other things that make it good, well, you sort of have the whole package. I think that's where this thing comes in with its ergonomics. The ergonomics on this are what makes it really, really enjoyable to use. My other machine, I didn't really notice, but I'm slouching a lot when I'm splitting. It all comes down to the working height. This right here, if you look at where it's positioned, it's right at my hip. I'm just under six feet tall. This is at about 32, 32 and a half inches to the top of the table. Whereas this, if I stand beside it, and we'll get in the position I was working in right here. To the top of the I-beam here, I'm not too much above my knee. This is about 27 inches, maybe 26 and a half inches, give or take five inches taller working height on the Easton Made Ultra. Over the length of, uh, you know, my splitting years, I'll probably notice that in paints in my neck and that. And so I think having that um, long term will probably be easier on my body. Some other things I noted when going from this machine over to this machine was this table area. You guys see how big it is here? That's something I didn't really know I wanted until I had it. Having this allows me to split big rounds so that one side falls over here, one side falls over here. I can leave the one side alone. It's not going to go off the table. Process the other side into the pieces I need and then go back and grab the other half. Allowing me to do that without having to pick up the pieces off the ground is something I really noticed I liked. This on the other hand, we threw a few big pieces up here. It split it no problem. But you probably saw me sort of horsing around a little bit trying to keep them up here on my makeshift table. Every once in a while it wanted to fall off on the engine or fall off this way or that way or fall this way. And so uh, having that large table I noticed was a uh, really big, really big thing that I liked. So after running these side by side, I've also found out that I don't really like the wedge mounted on the cylinder. Now there is a reason for that. This particular splitter here splits both horizontally. You can pop a pin and then flip it up and split vertically as well. Uh, the vertical feature, to be honest, I've probably used it like twice. I didn't really care for it, probably because I have a tractor to lift heavy rounds up into the horizontal position. But you can flip this vertically. And if you're gonna flip it vertically, then you have to have the wedge on the cylinder. Uh, the reason I don't like it is because after you split the rounds, the split round st stays right here. Then you have to throw it out of the way. You have to throw it out of the way before you can roll another piece up there to continue splitting. Well, that takes time. If you're working with two people, you can make that go fairly quickly, but you still gotta wait on the person to move the splits before you can ro roll another piece up there. In contrast, the push through design here, the reason I like this, you put the round there, the uh, pusher pushes the round right through the, right through the wedge. You end up with your splits out here. And that way you already have this area open immediately after it's split. If you're working with a second person, maybe even a third, they can be here, they can reload, and you can simply focus on pushing the wood through the wedge. The next person maybe is out here unloading it. That's something I noticed with this push through design that I really like compared with that where the wedge is on the cylinder. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for that old thing. It's probably going into hibernation for a little while. I don't know how long I'll hold on to it. I will end up selling it. Uh, it's perfectly good. Obviously, the engine needs a little bit of work. I think the carb needs to be cleaned out at least better than I've done it. That way, it'll be uh, in full operation for someone else. Aside from that engine and the carb clean works quite well, so that'll move on to someone else at some point. But what I'm going to do, because I enjoy splitting wood so much with this, and that's no lie, I'm going to continue splitting this to get it cleaned up. And judging by how much I have left, I could probably get another IBC cage up here. We'll fill her up and then we'll call her good for today. So here we go.